Hello, DGens. Welcome to Degenerate Takes NFL Week 6 Overreactions and Degenerate Takes. I, of course, am the Brofict one, AJ. Joining me, as always, is the man with the number sportsbook whisperer, college basketball guru, daddy of the diamond. All hail the king of the links, the money train, the man with too many nicknames, Mr. Noah Engelbretson. How the hell are you doing today, Bob? I'm doing great, AJ. How are you? Dude, I'm not going to lie. I could complain, and I'm going to complain because the Cardinals may be the worst <laughs> team in football and the Bears aren't too far behind. Um, but overall, Noah, honestly, I'm good. All right. I, I will say, all right, uh, just in, before anyone comes for me, yes, I was off on a couple picks this weekend. Now, if I was given this exact same board 10 more times, Noah, the only game I would switch is the Cardinals because that's just me being a homer, and we can't have that on this show. All right, we're here to make money, and that was my bad, all right? That one's on me. That's all I got to say, though, on that. I mean, it's been a pretty good. Good weekend, good football. Yeah, yeah. NFL remains, you know, crazy as always. Oh, as god-awful crazy as you can imagine. And it's starting to get to the point where... I, I don't even know, bro. Like, I, we're going to go on later this week, and we're going to handicap every single game. But, you know, I had my Chargers as my pick to win the Super Bowl at the beginning of the season. I have since stepped away from that statement. And, Noah, I'm trying to pick its predecessor, and I can't find one. I can't find one. And people are going to say, AJ, it's the Bills. Look at them. Look at the Giants. They're 5-1. and one. They beat the Ravens. Look at the Steelers. Uh, not the Steelers. My bad. Um, but you know what I mean? The Chiefs still not looking bad. Noah, I guess my thing is, who do you have winning the Super Bowl? And have you changed your pick at all? Because I'm in such a state of flux. Like, I don't even know where to start, bro. Uh, I'm sticking with the Packers, but, <sighs> not, confi- but not confidently anymore. It's a... It's, uh... It's a wet noodle, lousy pick for me at this point, but I'm still sticking with my guns. Um, we're only six weeks into the season, so I'm not freaking out about anything yet. The Packers still have just as much talent. They don't have any major injuries. They just need to figure it out. Yeah, they, they just figure it out. can't seem to put the ball in the end zone, and that's a pretty big part of the game. So, Well, I'm, I'm giving them f- four more weeks. If... If they don't have it figured out by week 10, I, then I'm going to be really nervous. But, um, you know, if they come out, have a commanding win, <laughs> commanding win over the commanders. Um, I realized halfway through that sentence that, that was going to be a pun. Oh, you're fine. Um, but if they can do that, and then if they can even stick with the Bills the week after playing in Buffalo and make it a close game. I'm I'm not worried at all, you know. I mean, even if they're four and four through eight weeks, but they play Buffalo to like a one-score game in Buffalo, yeah, you know, I'm not too worried. Yeah. Honestly, um. I, I I look at it. It doesn't make me feel a whole lot better, but it makes me feel a little better when I'm like, okay, we lost the Vikings who are five and one, the Giants who are five and one, and the Jets who are four and two. So, <laughs> I mean, absolutely. Um, like, don't get me wrong, that's, Noah. That's like, a combined fourteen and four record. For the teams we lost to no absolutely and yes we can make that argument that yeah the Packers have played some difficult teams you know some would say some of the best in the league uh my argument is it yes they have been but they haven't at any point in this season at any point six games through now they have not once looked like the Packers of even last year and now I I, I know what everyone's gonna say Devontae Adams is gone and we lost a lot of pieces yes absolutely a lot of teams lose a lot of pieces but I, I'm starting to get on the boat that that Devontae loss was a little bit bigger of a deal than maybe Packers fans thought about and I don't know Aaron Rodgers hasn't been playing the same since his ayahuasca trip I mean at not any point this season except for a couple throws has he looked like a back-to-back MVP looking to three-peat um I'm I, no well, you know I'm a Packers supporter as a Bears fan but I'm pulling the shoot bro I'm out I'm out on the pack bro I do have to correct you that ayahuasca trip was actually two years ago before he won back-to-back MVPs. It was not this offseason. My bad. Uh, But, yeah, Aaron Rodgers has looked not Fine, you should take a fucking another one then if that's what's going on. Probably. That's probably what he needs. Um, (laughs) But, like, you you look at it. (laughs) I mean, there's, like, two teams maybe in the entire league that are standing out right now. Yeah. That being the, the Eagles and the Bills. 
and granted, is it is only six weeks through the season. Chiefs do look good. I'm not gonna shy away from them just because they lost a really close one to Buffalo. Uh, and then you got teams like Dallas who look pretty good. The Giants look pretty good. Uh, the Vikings, despite being five and one, do not look that good. So, <laughs> like, there's not that many teams that are impressing me so far. And I, I think I said it like week two or three, AJ, that this was going to be a weird season. Yeah. yeah. I, I got those vibes from like two weeks of the season. I'm like, this is going to be a weird season. Um, I could see like 20 to 22 teams somehow making a playoff push and winning the Super Bowl this year. No, honestly. Maybe not I'm... winning maybe not winning the Super Bowl, but there's like 20 to 22 teams I could see making some sort of weird late season playoff push. Uh, there's only about 10 teams that I – don't even think should be in the playoff conversation. Yeah, no, and I'm on. I'm I'm in the same wavelength. Like we we can't talk about the Bears. We can't talk about the Jaguars. We can't talk about the Seahawks. I'm the eh, eh, well, uh, eh. well, <laughs> well. But we can't talk about at least those two teams in a serious like Carolina. Thank you. That's the other team I was looking yes. for. Yep. Can't talk about those teams and realistically talk playoffs because you're just not. Like you cannot talk playoffs. Those fan base probably doesn't even know what that word means at this point. But I, I would put the Lions. I would put the Lions up there with how they've played so far this season. I I'm ha- holding I hate out. To say I'm it, holding out. But they're they're looking like a four to six win team. You know their, their defense is just so bad. It's so bad. Yeah. Yeah. Pittsburgh. Okay. I would put. I would put Pittsburgh there. I mean, they did beat Tampa Bay, but Tampa Bay's uh, Tampa. looking like a. Uh, they're looking like a 50-50 whether or not they're even going to make the playoffs this year. So wait, let's stop there for a second. Let's talk about Tampa for a hot second because news coming out today that Tom Brady uh, flew out to New York on Friday to go to Bob Kraft, Robert Kraft, owner of the Patriots, a wedding party, not even wedding, just a party, and then flew from New York to the Steelers, missing the Saturday walkthroughs and the team flight. I mean, now I'm a goat guy. You know, I'm a goat guy and everything like that. I love me some Tom, but he is starting not to act like the goat. Okay. When MJ and Kobe got into their later years before they retired, their work ethic didn't change. Nothing changed about them. They were still about the game. And I thought that's the Tom we were going to get, especially with this whole divorce and shit with Giselle. He clearly chose football over his family. I mean, that's just plain facts at this point, but Then he goes off and does shit like this, where he is just doing stuff that isn't Tom Brady. And I, you know, I made some money this weekend betting against Tom Brady. I did for the first time. And I've always said, you don't win money betting against Tom Brady. But yeah, here we are, Noah. Is, is it true? Is, is the goat dead? I think he's realizing that this is going to be his last year. Um, (sighs) And, and I think the injuries in the like decimated offensive line is going to push him into retirement finally. Yeah, it, it and that that offensive line that's the big thing for me. I I don't remember a season in a long time where Tom's been hit like this. I mean, he is just taking punishment, game in, game out, and really cannot get any help whatsoever. It started with Ryan Jensen going down his center, well, he's, and it's he's got continued such a good from defense. there. He's got such a good defense. He's got receiving weapons that are now coming back, but uh, he doesn't have any time to throw the ball. Yeah, and he still has one of the quickest release times in the NFL from ball to hand. I mean, ball out, but yeah. <sighs> you got to be able to, you know, see the receivers, I guess. Um, working our way back a little bit now, Noah, before I go into utter meltdown talking about the Cardinals, um, the, I, the New York football giants are five and one? Am I reading yeah. this correctly? And and I'm sorry, who's their quarterback? Is it? Danny, it oh, it's Danny, Danny Dimes. Dimes? Danny Dimes with the 5-1 and one Giants. Let's go, bro. Now, listen, I'm like more, most sports fans, and I fucking hate New York teams and what they stand for and who they are, all right? I was so happy to see the Mets not only blow a 10-and-a-half game lead, but then continue to just suck ass in the, in the wild card series. But besides that, The New York Giants, I mean, Danny Dimes has not had an easy go in the NFL like a lot of these young quarterbacks, shout out Justin Fields, are experiencing right now. So the fact that he can even taste a little bit of success and show that he isn't just the worst quarterback to pick up a football in NFL history, I mean, 
I'll take that as a win overall. But hey, it was a hard-fought battle with the Ravens. I'm starting to get on board with this New York football giant subway train. Not bandwagon, obviously. So, Yeah, I don't know. Dable might be the goat here. Um, holy shit, he turned a, a dumpster fire of a program in six games in is uh, looking like an actual decent team. Yeah. And they have no receivers. Like, you look at their receiver depth chart, it, it's nobody. Saquon's having a great year. That defense is looking pretty good. Danny Dimes looks okay, but he's got nobody to throw to, so you bring that into consideration. He's playing pretty decent. I don't know. Uh, New York might have something here. Yeah, and honestly, outside of anything crazy happening down south in Jacksonville, I mean, we could be looking at easily a 7-1 and one team. And then, again, in Seattle, outside of anything crazy happening, we could be looking at an 8-1 and one team. And then you're telling me they play the Texans and the Lions after that? Noah, I, I, you know, I, will not, I have not watched enough New York Giants tape to give a solid opinion on this, but my overreaction in general is we're probably getting an 11-1 and one Giants team here and going to the playoffs. Yeah, that is a weak stretch of schedule. I could see it happening. Whew. Whew. Shout but. out. Shout out Kyle Jacobson down there, under, down under. <laughs> uh, your Giants are actually doing something, and you have to stay up until 3 a.m. your time to watch it, bud. Somehow it still sucks to be a Giants fan. That's awesome. Yeah, AJ, should we dive into uh, the recap of all the games, starting with Thursday night here? Oh, shit. Sorry. Yeah, got off on a little bit of the storyline, bro. You- Are you ready to talk about your Chicago Bears? Okay. Yes. Noah. The Bears fucking suck. Okay. As a one, let me quote a song real quick. The Bears still suck. The Bears still suck. The Bears still fucking suck, Noah. And there is nothing we can do about it. I mean, listen, I have dealt with a lot of quarterbacks giving me pouty faces and everything like that. Shout out Kyler Murray and the absolute tear I'm going to go on with the Arizona Cardinals but the way Justin Fields looked on the sideline third quarter of that game on the headset I feel so bad for this kid Ohio State quarterback extremely talented and yet the poor bastard gets drafted to the place where quarterbacks go to die Noah the Bears are awful the commanders did not play any better shout out for Thursday night under still hitting and shout out to the Cardinals and the Saints for keeping that going this week but Bears suck Carson Wentz sucks I believe he broke both of his ankles yet again in the second quarter of this game somehow or third quarter so shout out to him he broke a finger broke a finger okay he got his he still got his ankle taped up all right he is weak as glass bro but that's my that's my opinion on the jets and i still don't think they are half as bad as the packers might end up being what are your thoughts noah on the the well you brought the jets and the packers into the washington and chicago game yeah no I'm, i'm kind of all over the place right now just what did you think of the commanders and the bears um yeah, the Bears are terrible. Uh, Washington's also not a very good football team, but um, better than the Bears, apparently. So that's all that matters, I guess, <laughs> in this one. Um, yeah, I don't have a ton of thoughts other than both these teams are not very good. Yeah, and I got not a lot of thoughts on the next game either. 49ers-Falcons, I mean, we said it on our show when we talked about the bets. Jimmy G was going to end up Jimmy Ging this week. He played so well the week before. He was going to fail out this one. I mean, the Falcons with an easy route, 14-point victory over the Niners to start our Sunday off. Hey, hey, big big kudos to the Falcons. They did not blow a fourth-quarter lead. I was they watching that game, and I was like, God damn it, I should take 49ers' money line right now. <laughs> and I, I believe we now have the 3-3 three and three Falcons who... Is it a three-way tie at 3-3 at three and three at the top of that division? I believe so. I can pull that up real quick. Um... Da-da-da-da. Where is it? Yeah, uh, yeah. Top of the division, Tampa Bay and the Falcons. Well, never mind. This <laughs> Saints are the Saints lost. They're two and four. Yeah. But you got the Bucks and the Falcons. Um, yeah, the Saints could easily be three and three. Uh, 
Wow. This this is going to be the division this year that somebody's... This is going to be that one division. Every year we have one where there's a nine-win team getting a home playoff game because they won their division. And this is going to be the one. Yeah. And I still think it's either going to be the Saints or the Bucks. But I'm not going to write off the Falcons. The Dirty Birds who I think I projected at seven or eight wins despite their over under being like four and a half. They're not as bad as people thought they were going to be. They're trending in the right direction. Mariota's not terrible. He's not a guy who's going to go out and like win you a bunch of games, but he's not terrible. No, he's exactly who we thought he's going to be, which is an average NFL quarterback, which is awesome. And he's, and he is playing well enough to keep his starting job over the rookie Desmond Ritter. And I think he continues to play well enough to keep that starting job probably through the whole season. Yeah. No, I'm with you there, bro. Shout out to him. He's playing He's playing good football, and he can continue and hopefully get a starting job somewhere, probably Carolina. Um, moving on, uh, you brought up the Saints, so let's talk about them. Heartbreaker in Louisiana losing to the Bengals, 30-26, to 3-3 three and three Bengals. I mean— I'm not going to go in as far back to say that they're back by any means necessary, but they at least show me they can win a football game, a close one, um, against a, I think, above-average Saints team. I think they're playing a lot better than any of us thought. Shout-out Jameis Winston for get. Oh, no, no, well, Andy Dalton started. I'm sorry. I was reading something I, else. I was going to say Jameis hasn't played the last three weeks. Yeah, but. that might be why they're winning. Um but yeah, shout out to Andy Dalton, still getting it done, 17 for 32, maybe tighten up those numbers a little bit. But Joe Burrow, 28 for 37, 300 yards, three touchdowns. That's the Joe Burrow we all know and know and love. That's Joey Ice. That's Joe Shiesty. I mean, I just need to see some more of it. Yeah. Um, tough one for the Saints. They were in command of this game for like a good portion of it. And then the Bengals scoring two touchdowns in the last four minutes of the game to take a four-point victory. And like, and the Saints have been so close so many weeks. They just don't have that, like, it factor, that winning factor. Which is the tough part, because this could easily be a 4-2, and 5-1 and one Saints team, but they are not taking care of business when it matters most in the fourth quarter and at the end of games. So we'll see. Jameis should be back next week against the Cardinals Thursday night. Um, probably going to be a doozy of a game, but we'll see what happens. No, it's going to be so freaking exciting. I, can you not tell my excitement for another Thursday night stunner? <laughs> God. Who knows? We might We might get an I mean, we could get an offensive shootout. Yeah, we'll talk could. about the fucking Cardinals in a minute. Um, operative, <laughs> operative word being could. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about the GOAT coach for a minute. Uh, Bill Belichick, shout out. He is now tied for the second most wins in NFL history, 38-15. Uh, to 15. He famously got handed the game-winning ball and uh, did not know what to do with it, did not want it, and the equipment manager came and just took it away. Shout out to Bill Belichick for still being, I think, the greatest human ever to live. I mean, the man doesn't answer questions when he's asked. Or if he does, it's as cryptic as possible. He doesn't care about the sentimental stuff. All he knows is he's got a game to plan for next week. All right? He is all about ball, and that's what I want about my coach. He also was invited to Robert Kraft's wedding party and did not go. So I'm just saying, Belichick won. Brady didn't. One (laughs) of them's changed a lot. One of them hasn't. Yeah. Yep. And uh, and New England's looking kind of good the last couple weeks. Yeah, they are. Billy Zappy? With Yeah, with Bailey Zappy. Hey, it's Zappy hour, baby. <laughs> Get on board. Um, will he take Mac Jones's job? Probably not, but you know, I'd love to see a little quarterback competition here in New England. Zappy's playing really well. Um, you know, close one, almost beat the Packers in Green Bay and then turns around and absolutely trounce trounces the Lions, trounces the Browns. Um, you know, New England's always been a great system quarterback type of place, and Zappy seems to be playing really well. You know, it, it, it could be Mac Jones for all we know. They look really similar. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they play really similar. This just strengthens my opinion that it doesn't matter who the fuck is playing quarterback for New England. It's going to all look the same. I'm with you there now, bro. Uh, I, I will I will jump on that bandwagon with you now. I'm there. 
Mac Jones, Brian Hoyer, Bailey Zappi, Cam Tom Newton. Brady. Doesn't doesn't matter. Well, anybody but Cam <laughs> Newton. <laughs> but yeah, New New England's looking like they found their legs this season. Um, sitting at three and three, which is tied for last place in the division with the Dolphins. Game behind the Jets, two behind the Bills, but. Uh, don't cut this Patriots team out. I, th- I think they're going to be a playoff team. Really? Again this year. I, I think they I think they squeak into the playoffs with like a 10 and 7, maybe an 11 and 6 record. But hey, I think that's they're going to start ripping off some wins here. That's respectable. A- after, definitely doable. Yeah, after a 1 and 3 start, uh, yeah, I think they're they're trending the right direction. I'm 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 bullish on the Patriots and buying their stock. Fair, fair. All right, now I'll let you start with this one. Jets, Packers, 27-10. The MILF Hunter comes out, slays the beast in Lambeau. Oh, yeah, take a nice big sip before you talk about this one, bud. What do you think of the Packers this year, huh? They'll be fine. <laughs> no shot. Like I said earlier uh, in the show, I'm done. I'm off. You can't do still it. Gonna w- they're still going to win the division. Despite the Vikings being at five and one, because we we know the Vikings are a fake five and one, um, the Packers are gonna figure it out. It might take a couple more weeks, but they're gonna figure it out, and they're gonna still win the division. They're gonna still get a top three seed in the NFC, um, and then once you get to the playoffs and win the division and have that, you know, home field for the first game, then it it, it you know slate's wiped clean. It doesn't doesn't matter if they lose six games in the regular season i mean i guess i guess no but when i watch the packers you know and i test is a big deal for me all right especially now that we're six weeks in we're over a quarter of the way through the season and i'm not seeing the packers team that i have learned to see okay i have been a packers hater my entire life why do i hate them because they are efficient on offense and shut you down on defense and maybe you got a shot on special teams Special teams seems to be doing a lot better. But your defense and offense mm, at this well, point. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you watch this game? I, I watched clips. No. no, I didn't watch the full game. Out of market. Okay. Yeah, the fact that you mentioned special teams and looking okay, I know you didn't watch this. Because our nightmares from seasons past came back. Uh, Packers had a missed field goal, a blocked punt that got returned for a touchdown, and then a second blocked punt. So... Oh, I, okay. So never mind. Um, the Packers aren't sound on any part of the ball this season. They haven't been all season. And hey, maybe the, they the will get it together. Was, I mean, what, oh, the, the defense. Defen- the, the defense is fine. The defense is fine. If you look at points, you're like, okay, what the fuck is the Packers defense doing? You look at everything else. The, the Packers are, are ranked in the I, I think they were ranked fifth in total defense last, like coming into the week. They're probably not in the top five anymore, but they're probably in the top ten still. Um, like they're they're fine. The defense looked fine in this game too, but uh, what do the Jets have? Twenty seven points. Yeah. Um, seven of those were because of a blocked punt that got returned for a touchdown, and then. <laughs> I, either 10 or 14 of their points were because they started a drive in Packers territory. So I, if you're giving a team less than 50 yards to go to score, if you're basically letting them start drives within field goal range already, I'm not going to put that on the defense for like giving up points on those drives. All right, fine. Fine, Noah. So, so I'm just you saying you can live in your little defense, fantasy world. It's fine, Noah. Pa- Packers defense is getting a lot more heat than they need to. The offense, there are a lot of troubles that they need to f- figure out how to iron out and figure out what's going on because they're put the offense is putting offense and special teams have been putting the defense in bad situations and making the defense look bad. The defense is not bad. They're good. They just need the offense and the special teams to like figure it out. Well, you and, did, I- uh, well, you got the Commanders on Sunday, so we'll see how many points they end up putting up on you guys. Uh, moving it on, Noah. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. I mean, they only got, what, 12 or 13 against the Bears? I'm not too worried. Yeah, we'll see, Noah. Uh, moving along, two shit shows that was high scoring as crap because both of them don't have defenses. Jaguars, Colts, 27-34. Colts get it done at home. Um, yeah. 
It happens. Both these teams suck. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Vikings, Dolphins. Uh, Vikings coming out 24-16, not choking it away to a third-string quarterback. I mean, they won this game. I'm not taking too much away from it. They still, it was still close. Still close, so I'm not really taking anything. Well, said third-string quarterback got injured in early in the second quarter, and then uh, oh, yeah, Teddy, Teddy Bridgewater, <laughs> who was concussed last Sunday, by the way. Oh, yeah. Um, came into the game. Love that Miami is taking that so seriously now, especially after Tua, who is scheduled to start this weekend. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah, going to go know, over that, well. Yeah, concussions don't exist in uh, South Beach. <laughs> no, never. It's that sun. It's all in the sun. Uh, we already talked about Bengals, Saints, Ravens, Giants, uh, Buccaneers, Steelers. Buccaneers, Steelers. I mean, the Bucks are just not there. They are not hey, mon- there. Money Mitch. Money Mitch. <laughs> yeah, because Kenny Pickett got in. What he yeah. got? Uh, was it? Did he get concussed? Some type of injury. I don't remember what it was. I think it might have been a concussion. Mitch Trubisky coming in, winning the game for the for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Do we have a quarterback con- uh, controversy again in Pittsburgh now? No, it's Kenny Pickett. It was always Kenny Pickett. They should have just started him in the season. They both, they both suck, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, it was bad. Um, another two teams that I want to label as bad. One of them definitely bad. I want to hear what you got to say about this other team. Panthers, Rams. Uh, Panthers obviously got awful, losing to the Rams 24-10. to But I'm not going to say that the Rams looked good by any means necessary. Oh, they didn't. They didn't. They looked rough. And this score is not reflective of how the game went. Either. No, not even a little bit. I, I mean, this game was... <laughs> I, I mean, Panthers are winning at halftime. Rams tied it up late in the third quarter. Then late, late in the third quarter, finally took the lead. Uh, yeah, the Rams do not look good. Um, their offensive line, who they have one of their five starters, has been playing from their Super Bowl season last year. Offensive line's not looking good. Stafford looks like that elbow injury is kind of affecting him a little bit. The only thing that looks good about the Rams is Cooper Cup. Their yeah. defense looks like it got worse. Um, Allen Robinson, pretty much non-factor almost every single week. Yeah, somehow making um, the Bears look good in that trade. Yeah, they have no running game. They got nothing, bro. But- they have Cooper Cup. They got Cooper Cup, that's yeah. It. Hey, maybe and, and OBJ too. They have been in talks, but the number is not right reportedly. And, and so, yeah, the Ram, Rams are on the struggle bus. Like I said, I was going to wait four or five weeks for the Super Bowl hangover. Uh, it looks like it's a, a, a massively lingering hangover. Yeah. And actually, it's not even a hangover. I just This team's not as good as the team they had last year. Yeah, no, Cut not... Dry. Yeah, not at Cut all. Dry. And, and I remember I was getting shit on a little bit this offseason for saying the Rams did not get better, and if anything, they got worse. And now I think that was a very sound take. Yeah. Because they, they do not look up to par with what the team was last year. No, not even a little bit. Von Miller and OBJ obviously being key parts of the team that are not there from the Super Bowl year. Um, obviously, Bobby Wagner does not matter. No. He's not doing anything because he's too old and slow. Yeah. Um, their offensive line sucks. They have no running game. Like Rough yeah. rough in L.A. Rough in L.A. Noah, you know where it's not rough? Beautiful, cloudy Buffalo, New York, as the Bills beat the Chiefs at Arrowhead 24-20. I mean... Hey, the Bills are the best team in the NFL. I mean, the one loss I think you can kind of erase. They're going to be fifteen and one, uh, sixteen and one, excuse me, by the time this and the season. Chiefs and the Chiefs might be the second best team, yeah, if not the third. Oh, a hundred percent. The fact that this game was only twenty-four to twenty just proves how good those defenses are, and just how on point each quarterback was throughout that game. It was back and forth the entire time. I mean. Chiefs had the ball at the end of the game there. I thought it was over. I thought the Chiefs were going to march down there and get it. But no, no thank you. Give it the Bills. Solid win for the Bills. 
Shout out to the Bills. Happy for Buffalo. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to say the Bills are going to be a one-loss team because they're not. They're going to lose more games this year. Um, but 14-3, and 13-4 and four seems like a good mark for Buffalo this year. Um, Super Bowl favorite coming into the season, pro- probably rightfully so, still should be. Uh, these teams are going to play again. Yes. Whether it's the divisional round or the AFC championship, just depending on how the seeding lines up, but they will be playing each other in the playoffs. It's going to be another really exciting, outstanding game. I look forward to it. As I said, these are you know probably two of the three best teams in the league right now. No, easily. They're the best. And Noah, going from the best to the worst. All right. <laughs> I want to talk about Cardinals and Seahawks. And when I talk about my Cardinals, the first thing I want to bring up is something that was brought to my attention by one of our viewers. And that is the sunk cost fallacy. And for those of you who don't know what the sunk cost fallacy is, it is defined as the phenomenon whereby a person is reluctant to abandon a strategy or course of action because they have invested heavily in it, even when it is clear that abandonment would be more beneficial. Thank you for the definition of what we need to do with Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury. Yes, we just paid them a fuck ton and a half of money to stick around and be a playoff team. We are two and four. We are two and four. And how are we reinvigorating our offense, Noah? We are signing a wide receiver who got ejected from the game by his own coach in Robbie Anderson. We are getting back D hop. Thank you, I guess. But yet we are still left with a quarterback who looks like he's trying to keep his lucky charms away from the children and a coach who can't seem to get a first down in Madden on rookie mode. Are you kidding me, bro? This is unbelievable what we are seeing out of Arizona. The fact that the Cardinals have two wins, I think, is more of a fallacy than this sunken cost bullshit. We need to clean house because this shit's not working. It hasn't worked in the past. Everyone has tape on you guys now. They know exactly what you do, and you don't change it up. The amount of creativity, I have more creativity in my left pinky toe. Than, I, than Cliff Kingsbury has in his whole body. I have more balls to run straight into a bunch of big guys that are trying to tackle me than a mobile quarterback like Kyler Murray who's getting paid $240 million over the next five years. I'm done. I am done. And Noah, you have the right to end any stream we are on if I say I am taking the Cardinals money line again. The funny thing is... The the funny thing is, AJ, you look at the standings and the Cardinals are only one game behind San Francisco, <laughs> LA, and Seattle. Um, even Kyler Murray's short little arms are within reach of the division lead. And that's the funniest part of this is this division that two years ago, everybody was talking about the best division in football. Um, they're looking like a little bit of a clown division this year. It's awful. The whole division is god awful. I, I mean, for fuck's sakes, the Seahawks, who were projected to be like the second worst team in the league, are starting to look like they might be able to like make a push for a division win this year. And I've never been a huge supporter or fan of Pete Carroll, but if he can somehow pull the Seattle team into a playoff team with the roster they have. Um, I owe him a public apology because he's doing some crazy things. Geno Smith playing out of his mind. Um, San Francisco looks like a different team every single week. The Rams don't look very good. So I'm not going to count the Cardinals out of it yet just because of how crazy and terrible this division looks so far. So, and I know that's not what you want to hear because you're ready to abandon hope, but unfortunately, abandoning hope is not really a, an option right now because, you know, there's, there, there's plenty of a chance. Yeah, I know. This division the Bears, is wide open. I know. The Bears did the same shit to me a couple of years ago when they fucked around with Mitch Trubisky, made the playoffs, and lost a good draft pick. Okay, I'm aware of how this season's going to end up. We're going to end up freaking 11-6 and six somehow. 
and we're gonna eight and nine. Eight and nine, fine. I'll take eight and nine and somehow winning the goddamn division because it's so bad. And we're just going to walk into Wild Card Weekend and just you know bend over because that's what the Cardinals do in the playoffs now. Oh my god, I hate this team. I hate this team. I I hate this team more than that Mitch Trubisky led Bears team. This is awful. And if this is the hell I have to live in for the next couple of weeks, I'm not here for it, bro. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They're so bad. They're so bad. And then I and then just for the cherry on top, Noah, for the cherry on top, I get to watch them every week on Hard Knocks and how dysfunctional that entire team is midseason. You have got to be start, kidding me. Has that started yet? No, it starts in November. Oh, I can't wait. I can't. I, wait. I, can. I do not want to see into that locker room. I do not want to see into those meeting rooms because half of the fucking meeting is going to be, hey, Kyler, can you put your switch down and pay attention, please? Hey, Kyler, <laughs> your playbook's down there. It's not. It's on the iPad. It's not on your switch. Hey, Kyler. Important to, important to note that uh, the next Call of Duty is launching next week. So Yeah, I know. I know. And last weekend was a double XP it, weekend but- in the last Warfare, so... Put those two numbers but, together too, and they took the amendment good, out. But Cardinals are playing on Thursday. I don't know what day of the week Call of Duty drops, but if it's after Thursday, don't gotta worry about shit. No, it's gonna be a midnight drop Thursday morning at midnight. I, I think we should look that up. I'm looking it up right now because that's a big factor. Because the Cardinals might have gotten lucky by the gods of scheduling to have a Thursday night game if the Call of Duty's dropping on like Friday or Saturday because Kyler Murray is going to go out like win the game and then spend all weekend playing playing Call of Duty just drop Wednesday so October 28th is the official release date for the whole game that's however okay. early however, release however players who pre-order the game will be able to play the campaign as early as October 20th, 2022 at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Eastern. That's 7 a.m. here. So that means Kyler is going to wake up extra early Thursday (laughs) to play Call of Duty until he absolutely has to leave for that stadium. Does he care about campaign, though? Is he a campaign guy? I assume so, so we can get used to the guns when it comes to going into multiplayer so he doesn't know the recoil and everything. I don't give a shit. He probably will. We'll find out. Find out. Of course. Of course. Of course. It's 10 a.m. Eastern on the Thursday night game. Classic. <laughs> Give me the Saints by a billion and a half. Um, final game. Jameis should be back, too. Yeah. Two billion and a half. Um, Cowboys, Eagles, Sunday night football. Eagles, Eagles are the real team, and the Cooper Rush experience had to come to an end at some point. Although Dallas, not looking bad. I mean, considering the turnover differential in that game, would, would Cooper Rush end up having three interceptions? Only one of those, in my mind, were actually his fault. Watching the game. Yeah. Uh, and that's been a big reason he's been winning. He's taking care of the ball. But the fact that the Cowboys only lost this game by nine points with how lopsided the turnover differential is... Um, the Eagles are good. This is not going to be sustainable through a no. whole season. Oh, God. And no. through a playoff push because they have an unreal turnover differential, which is why they keep winning games. Their defense is problematic. It just mm-hmm. hasn't been exposed because they have so many takeaways. It's going to get exposed at some point this season. Mark my words on that. I'm not ready to crown the Eagles the best team in the NFC by a long shot because they have a they have a very abnormal abnormally high level of takeaways yes that like i said will not be sustainable through the whole season those takeaways are going to start drying up and good teams are going to beat the eagles because their defense gives up a lot of yards and that's going to turn into a lot of points when they're not taking the ball away absolutely and let's be very clear about something when it comes to the eagles and the games they've won 38 35 against the lions 24 to 7 against the vikings probably their most impressive win 24 to 8 against the Commanders, 29 to 21 against the Jaguars, 20 to 17 against the Cardinals, 26 to 17 
against the Cowboys. This, you're right, no, this is not sustainable. When I see this team, I see an offense that is ready to go, but a defense that just needs, a, they're missing something. And I don't know but, what they're missing, but and eventually that offense is going to get figured out. That offense is going to get figured out, and when they have to play a really good defense, not saying the Cowboys defense isn't really good, but when they play a... They, they have a breeze through the entire Holy shit, they do. Season. If you're looking at their schedule, they've got Steelers, Texans, Commanders, Colts, Packers, Titans, Giants, Bears, Cowboys, Saints, and, and Giants again. This team's going to f- probably be a top two team in the NFC record wise by the end of the season. They're going to win this division. Um, if they get the number one overall record in the NFC and get that by, I think they lose that game. If they don't get the buy, like, like the second they have to play a playoff team in like a playoff environment, I, I think they're going to lose because, so I think they're going to cruise through the regular season. Look much like the Packers have the last couple seasons cruise through the regular season with only, you know, three, maybe four losses. And then they're going to get bounced from the playoffs early because they have such a weak schedule. Yeah, it is so weak. I mean, shit, I used to lift heavier weights than this in fucking elementary school, bro. Like they're lifting like baby, like air 25 crossfit, crossfit plate 25s right now, bro. And they can't even get it above their head. So yeah, they're definitely in over their head now. I mean, after Cooper Rush played this game, I mean, Dak Prescott cleared to play for next week. He'll be practicing all week. Who do you start, Noah? If you're, you know, your GM, head coach, Jerry Jones, who do you start? It, it's Dak. It's obviously Dak. Like, it has to be Dak. I, I know we like to sit around and give hot takes and everything on this show, but you're not starting Cooper Rush over Dak Prescott. No. no, you're not. You're just not doing it. And I know there's an argument potentially to be made going forward that, like, okay, Cooper Rush can give us similar production to what Dak can for a much cheaper price. But you still have Dak on the payroll. You still have Cooper Rush on the payroll. And Dak is better than Cooper Rush. Yes. <laughs> like, Let's not sit here and like try to pretend like Dak is not a better quarterback than Cooper Rush. No, absolutely. He is not a better quarterback. Dak Prescott will come in and play the Lions in his return game. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, shout out to the Lions, Titans, Raiders, and Texans. Not losing a game, not winning a game this week. Uh, staying even. So shout out. Mm-hmm. Good for them. Hey, and, sh- and shout out to our two remaining undefeated quarterbacks this season. Zach Wilson <laughs> and Jalen Hurts. Um who would have thunk it? I don't. I don't know. Bailey Zappi was really close to being three and zero as so well. Close. So, so close. Um, uh, yep. Just trying to prove my point here that wins are not a quarterback stat, <laughs> which I've been saying for years and years and years. But um, yeah, I there mean, you, you look at the quarterbacks that are undefeated. It was uh, coming into the week. It was Jalen Hurts, Cooper Rush, and Zach Wilson. So if you still think wins are a quarterback stat, I I encourage you to try to explain that one to me. Yeah, I got it. And, and if to that. and if you have if you have a if you have a really great worldly explanation for that, I'd love to hear it. But try to explain to me that quarterback or that wins are a quarterback stat with the quarterbacks and their records this season. I got to be on your side now. No, I hate to say it, but you're right on that one. It's not a quarterback stat; it's a team stat. So shout out to the teams that are undefeated, not the quarterbacks that are undefeated. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. <laughs> oh, no, you got anything else to say about NFL Week 6 before we sign off? I just want to reiterate, this year is going to be a weird fucking year. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this team that wins the Super Bowl is out of like complete left field. No, I got to be with you there, too. I think it's going to be another Bengals-type team that somehow makes a nice run and just gets hot at the right time, so... Can't wait for that, and we'll be here to cover all of that and more. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that we can quit our day jobs and be DGENs full-time. Again, hit that link tree in the description down below to follow us on all the socials. Check out the DGEN merch shop. And, yeah, 
We'll be back later this week to talk more football, talk all sports in between. I've been the Brift One, AJ. That's the Money Train Noah. We'll see you next time.